Welcome to our Anime Vanguard's tier list. If you're tired of wasting time trying out every unit just to figure out which ones are actually worth it, you're in the right place. We've done all the heavy lifting for you so you can skip the endless YouTube deep dives and the trial and error grind. In today's video, I'm going to break down the absolute best units in the game so you can dominate without all the guesswork. Trust me, you'll want to stick around. Your team and your win rate will thank you. Now, let's be real. Figuring out the strongest units can be a total headache. But don't worry, I've got you covered. We'll go over what makes these top picks shine and why they're your go-to choices if you want to crush your enemies and breeze through the toughest battles. So grab a snack, get comfy, and let's jump right into the action. You're about to see which characters deserve a spot on your team and why they'll make you the ultimate anime vanguards champion. Let's get started. I'm quickly moving on to the video and I'm ranking units in anime vanguards. Before we start, if you enjoy these types of tier list videos, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Enjoy watching. A very small portion of the audience is subscribed to the channel. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like these types of videos. Thanks. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Jinitsu, Roku, Rukio, Joe, Ichiga, John, Vegeta, Naruto, Lufo, and Sanjo. Alright, let's get real here. When it comes to picking your units in anime vanguards, some choices are just plain painful. We're diving into the E tier today, and oh boy, this is where the game gets a bit disappointing. These are the units that make you wonder, why did I even bother? Let's kick things off with Jinitsu, who somehow manages to be the worst epic unit out there. You'd expect an epic unit to at least hold its own, but Jinitsu can't even scratch the competition. He's got neither the damage output nor the utility. He's basically just taking up space on your roster. Next, we've got Roku, and don't let the E tier fool you. He's a decent early game pick. He's actually one of the better rare units for the start of your journey, thanks to solid DPS and a passive that can boost his attack by up to 42%. But trust me, his usefulness doesn't last long. Rukio, on the other hand, tries to make up for his shortcomings with high DPS. Sure, he might have the highest damage among rare units, but his tiny attack AoE is a deal breaker. He just can't hit enough targets to make a big impact. And then there's Joe, with a meh passive that's solid but outclassed by pretty much every other rare unit. Joe's a classic case of almost there but not quite. Now if you're looking for a challenge, go ahead and try to make Ichiga or John work. Ichiga's attack is weak and his passive only grants a 20% damage boost. Hardly impressive. Meanwhile, John's passive never really gets going, making him the most forgettable rare unit in the entire game. At least Vogita is, well, mediocre. But hey, that's still not saying much when you have way better rares at your disposal. And don't get me started on Naruto and his awful passive. The one silver lining, his upgrades are dirt cheap, so there's that. As for Lufo, he's basically Ichigo's twin, except he trades damage for range. Spoiler alert, it's not worth it. Finally, poor Sanjo, with bad stats and an even worse passive, he's the rare unit you'll regret picking every time. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Goi, Grimwau, Inosaki, Shinzi, Pikleo, and Sosuke. Oh boy, here we go. We're diving into the D tier of anime vanguards units, and you know what that means. These guys aren't exactly the superstars of the game, but they do have their moments. So let's talk about who made it into this dubious category and why you might actually consider using them, even if they're not your first pick. First up is Goi, the pure DPS powerhouse. Sure, he's not going to win any awards for versatility, but if you've got a mob of enemies in front of you, this guy starts shining. The more baddies in his range, the higher his damage goes, and hey, who doesn't love a little extra firepower? Plus, Goi's dodging ability can save you when you're staring down a boss. It's not perfect, but it's there when you need it most. Next, we've got Grim Wow, a classic case of almost great but not quite. He's a legend when it comes to boss fights, thanks to his passive ability. But his overall stats just don't live up to the hype. His DPS and range, not exactly what you'd call wow. It's a shame because his potential is right there, just kind of buried under mediocrity. And then there's Inosaki. This guy is all about that bleed effect, which sounds awesome, until you realize that's about all he brings to the table. He's got a low SPA, so he's quick to attack, and if shields are giving you grief, he's a decent option, just don't expect miracles. Meanwhile, Shinzi is here to deliver some solid DPS thanks to his passive, but beyond that, there's really not much else to get excited about. Last but not least, let's talk about Piccolo and Sosuke. 
Piclio might only be an epic, but he's a pretty solid DPS choice if you're desperate. His range is excellent, and his multi-hit attack is a godsend against shields. And then there's Sosuke, the rare unit who actually deserves a little love. He's got a reliable burn effect and performs decently even without upgrades. He might be rare, but if you've got nothing better, he can hold his own surprisingly well. So there you have it, the D tier legends. They might not be the cream of the crop, but sometimes you've got to work with what you've got. And hey, there's a certain charm to making the underdogs shine, right? The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Naruto Sage, Nobaba, Kinaru, Itochi, Bean, Roku Dark, Nazuka, Genes, and Gari. Oh, you know that moment when you think you've found the perfect unit in anime vanguards, and then it turns out they're just okay? Yeah, we're diving into those C-tier units that sit right in the middle, useful in certain scenarios, but never quite game changers. These are the units that make you go, well, at least they're not D-tier, right? So let's chat about the heroes who are almost there but not quite top contenders. First up, we've got Naruto, Sage. Now Naruto's passive sounds great on paper, but the guy's super picky about his placement. It's like he's demanding a VIP seat to perform well. Even when you've got it all lined up perfectly, he still kind of falls short compared to other mythics. Honestly, he's like that friend who shows up to a party, stands in the corner, and says they're having a blast, while you know they're just okay. Use him if you've got no other options, but don't rely on him to carry your team. Then there's no Barber, your go-to bleed unit if you're desperate. She's got a decent cone AoE and respectable DPS, but she's quickly overshadowed by better bleed options later on. Think of her as your temporary friend until the cooler, more reliable units show up to the party. Her range is solid, but honestly, if you're relying on her for bleed, it's time to upgrade ASAP. She's a good stepping stone, but won't be a permanent fixture in your dream lineup. Oh, and we can't forget Ganus and Gari, the shield-busting duo that's as reliable as your favorite snack. Genus is all about that burn with a passive that cranks up his attack speed, making him the go-to epic shield shredder. He's like the guy who always shows up when you need him, even if he's not the flashiest. Gari, on the other hand, has a low SPA thanks to his passive, making him a solid choice for breaking shields. But unlike Genes, he lacks that sweet bleed effect. Together, they make for a decent tag team, but don't expect them to steal the show. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Igros, Naruto Six Tails, Chaso, Song Jinwu, Jago, Gujo, Tengon, Sasuke Hebi, and the Vata. Ah, uh, you know what's the real struggle in anime vanguards? It's figuring out which units are worth your time before you've sunk all those precious resources into them. You've probably been there, staring at your lineup, wondering if that shiny new unit is a keeper or a total dud. Well, today we're diving into the B tier units, those heroes who are good, but maybe not great. These units are sitting right in the middle of the meta, and some of them just need that extra push to shine. Let's break down why they're in the B tier and why they still deserve a spot in your squad, even if it's temporary. First up, Igros. Now, if you've got the non-evolved Igros, you know that he's basically the definition of a strong stat stick. He's got some beefy base numbers that make him reliable even before evolution. But trust me, if you want him to go from solid to overpowered, you'll want to evolve him. His unevolved version is fine for beginners, but for the big leagues, evolution is a must if you're hoping to see him at his true potential. Then there's Naruto with his six tails form. Oh, Naruto. It's kind of tragic because his evolved form has a bit of a reputation. It's one of the worst mythics in its evolved state, mainly due to some seriously lackluster passives. But let's not write him off completely. His base stats are still up there, and he recently got a buff, which means he's not a bad pick if you want a high raw damage unit. He's not winning any popularity contests, but he's still a dependable option, especially if you don't have anything better yet. And how about Chasso? This guy's a solid pick if you're in need of some bleeding damage and shield breaking power. He's a niche choice, no doubt, but in the right scenarios, he's a lifesaver. If you don't need his bleed effect though, you're better off swapping him for a unit that deals better raw DPS. But in situations where shields are a pain to deal with, Chasso is your go-to guy. He's kind of like that friend who's really good at one thing. When you need him, he's a star, but otherwise, he's just okay. Let's not forget Song Jin Woo. This guy's stats might seem pretty average at first glance, but don't sleep on his passive. He's got a multi-hit on placement that really shines in certain situations. Plus, once you evolve him, he becomes one of the most meta-defining units in the entire game. So, yeah, he's mediocre right now, but evolving him is like discovering your unit had a secret superpower all along. Definitely a satisfying upgrade if you're patient enough. And finally, I've got to mention Tengen. With his cone AoE and multi-hit attack, 
He's got decent crowd control and his dodge passive is a handy little surprise against bosses that love to spam stuns. He's not exactly top tier, but he's got enough utility to keep things interesting. Think of Tengun as that steady B student who always shows up to class, reliable and solid, but not exactly breaking records. Sometimes, that's exactly what you need though, especially if you're gearing up for some of those trickier encounters. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Alucard, Renguko, Akazo Destructive, Sosuke Storm, Obita Awakened, Vogita Super, Cha-In, and Akazo. Alright, buckle up because we're diving deep into some of the most interesting A-tier units in anime vanguards, where every choice can make or break your strategy. Let's kick things off with Elocard, who is just an absolute monster even without his evolution. He's got bleed, he's rocking that full AoE, and the range? Top tier. Some even say he's the best non-evo unit for infinite mode. If you're looking for a solid unit that can hold his own without a bunch of fancy upgrades, Alucard's your guy. He's a staple for sure. Then there's Renguko, who's got this super handy burn ability right from the get-go. The moment you place him, he's already shredding those annoying shields. And by upgrade 2, he shifts into a cone AoE attack. Perfect for mowing down groups of enemies. Honestly, he's one of the best starter units out there, especially if you're just getting the hang of things. Plus, who doesn't love a reliable shield shredder early in the game? Now, let's talk about Akazo Destructive. This guy is all about utility. His active ability grants stun immunity and boosts his stats. Perfect for those tricky stages where status effects are a real pain. He's got a line attack that hits from a good distance with decent DPS to back it up. Sure, some mythics outshine him in raw power, but his situational advantages make him a real asset when the going gets tough. Oh, and speaking of utility, Sosuke Storm is an incredible support unit, especially after his recent stun buff. He's not just stunning enemies, but also making them take more damage. A few well-timed Sosuke stuns can completely turn a battle around, and you can't mention Aetir without Obita Awakened, a solid DPS unit with a reliable burn effect. He might not have the versatility of top tier mythics like SJW or Chayan, but if you need someone to dish out consistent damage and crack through shields, Obita's a safe bet. Oh, and let's not forget Vegeta Super, the unit you want for challenges. His passive lowers the SPA if you're surrounded by Vegeta units, making him a crazy good starter, especially without upgrades. He's one of those units that becomes an instant favorite for players who love optimizing their setups. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Renguko Purgatory, Jago Volcanic, Chasso Blood Curse, Vegeta Super Awakened, Tuji, Cha-In Blade Dancer, and Itaduri. Alright folks, let's dive right in, because if you've been grinding through anime vanguards lately, you know the S tier is where the magic happens. Today, we're talking about the heavy hitters, the cream of the crop, the game changers, the units that are going to make you feel like the king of the infinite mode. First up, we got to talk about Renguko Purgatory. Now, I'll be real with you, he's a bit of an underdog in the S tier, which is wild considering he's an exclusive. His passive is all about stacking damage on a single enemy and making burn effects hit harder, which is fantastic for those tough bosses. The downside, he's not full AoE, which limits his potential a bit, but if you're a fan of watching your enemies burn slowly but surely, Renguko still packs a punch, especially on those single target, tanky enemies. Then there's Jago Volcanic, and let me tell you, this evolved version is a total powerhouse. Jago has some killer stats, and when he activates his skill, it's full AoE madness for 15 seconds. That's your moment to watch everything on screen just melt away. He's perfect for those infinite runs, where you need consistent DPS and the ability to wipe out waves like they're nothing. Definitely a step up from the regular version, no contest. Now, if we're talking AoE Kings, Chasso Blood Curse needs to be on your radar. The Evolver version is full AoE from the start, and the real kicker is his passive. It ramps up damage on enemies that are bleeding. With 4 max placements, Chasso is an absolute monster in infinite mode. You can practically hear the enemies crying as he shreds them one bleed stack at a time. Alright, let's not forget Vogita Super Awakened, who's been blessed by the gods of buffs. This dude is the MVP when it comes to efficiency. He's dirt cheap to place and upgrade, which means you'll be getting his multi-hit madness up and running fast. Shields? He laughs at them. Bosses? He eats them for breakfast. With a passive that makes him a beast against tougher enemies, Vogita is someone you want in your corner when things get heated. And last but definitely not least, Itaduri. He might not be an evolved unit, but don't let that fool you. He's got multi-hit, he's super cheap, and you can place 5 of him on the field. 
Sure, he doesn't have the insane AoE of some others, but for those early waves when you're still building up your resources, Itaduri is the secret weapon you never knew you needed. An early game legend that will set you up for success down the line. There you have it, the best of the best in anime vanguards. These are the units that will make or break your high score dreams, so choose wisely, get grinding and dominate those infinite runs. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Gujo Infinity, 2G Sorcerer, Killer, Julius Iceplosion, Alucard Vampire King, Tengon Flashiness, Song Jinwu Monarch, and Igros Elite Knight. Alright, here's the thing, if you're not running Gujo Infinity in your anime vanguards lineup, you might as well be playing on hard mode for no reason. This guy is the definition of meta right now. His DPS is through the roof, and when he's maxed out, he's got full AoE that's just ridiculous. Oh, and let's not forget that OP ability, low cooldown and capable of wiping the entire map, aside from bosses. If you're looking for the ultimate map clearer, it's Gujo, hands down, no contest. But let's talk about 2G Sorcerer Killer for a second. This dude's a beast when it comes to versatility. Evo Toji's passive is a game changer. It lets him shred through shields, and right after that, he deals even more damage. What makes him even crazier is that he's got two abilities you can swap between, depending on if you're facing off against the boss or just mowing down mobs. It's like having a Swiss army knife of destruction, making him an absolute must-have in any serious player's arsenal. Now, I can't leave out Julius Iceplosion, because if you're looking for a support unit, this guy is the king of the hill right now. He's got these multi-hit attacks that freeze enemies in a massive AoE, making him a crowd control machine. His stats are solid across the board, but it's that freezing ability that really sets him apart. It's like dropping a snowstorm on the battlefield every time he attacks, giving your team all the breathing room they need to finish off the frozen foes. And then there's Alucard Vampire King, who's just... Wow, Evo Alucard is a powerhouse with full AoE, bleeding damage, and an insane range. His base damage is no joke, and his attack speed is low enough to keep the hits coming. Oh, and did I mention he can summon minions? These aren't just any summons, they're leagues ahead of what SJW's units can pull off. If you need a damage dealer that can also crowd the battlefield with powerful allies, Alucard's your guy. Finally, let's not forget about the absolute synergy bomb that is Song Jinwu Monarch and Egros Elite Knight. Evo SJW remains one of the top mythic picks thanks to his insane DPS and the ability to summon units which pairs beautifully with Evo Egros. These two together are like peanut butter and jelly, they just work. Egros gets crazy buffs from SJW and then buffs the SJW right back making them a deadly duo. Plus, Igros' full AoE, multi-hit, and immunity to stun mean he's built to last. If you've got the resources, investing in both is the way to go for some serious late-game power. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Takaroda, Sprint Wagon, Haruko, da, da, Haruka, Rin Dancer, Julius, Todu, Unleashed, Todu, Blossom, Inamuki, Alligator, Agony, Haruka Rin, Kinua and Kokashi. Alright, let's dive deep into the support and farm units that are absolute game changers in anime vanguards. Forget the usual, here's who to use spiel. We're going beyond the basics and looking at who really makes your squad shine and why they're worth every second of investment. First up, let's talk about the man of the hour, Takaroda. This guy is the meta-defining legendary farm unit, and if you haven't added him to your team yet, what are you even doing? Think of Takaroda as Sprint Wagon's big brother, but better in almost every way. Sure, Sprint Wagon is the king of short modes, with his rapid farm capabilities making him a no-brainer for quick battles, but Takaroda's overall power makes him the true staple. It's like comparing a reliable bike to a turbocharged sports car. Sprint Wagon still has his place, but Takaroda is on another level for those extended battles. Speaking of extending things, Haruka Rin, Dancer, deserves a special shout out. Now she might not have the flashiest buffs, but here's the thing, her passive adds range to units in her radius, which is way more powerful than it sounds. Stack that buff across multiple units, and suddenly, your battlefield looks a whole lot scarier. For your enemies, that is. Sure, the buffs aren't earth-shattering individually, but the cumulative effect is the difference between winning with a struggle and sweeping through enemies with a smile. Julius is another great support, especially in his unevolved form. Now, I know, the DPS isn't anything to write home about compared to the evolved version, but if you get his SPA down to a decent level, you're looking at one of the best crowd control options in the game. 
He might not hit the hardest, but freezing enemies left and right is just priceless, especially with free max placements. It's like the game saying, take your time, I've got this. Now, to do is a bit of a mixed bag. His unleashed form boasts better stats and an extra attack when fully maxed, but that evolution passive is, well, a bit meh. The real star here is his active ability, allowing you to swap places with another unit. It's incredibly handy for those tricky situations in tournaments or during the Shibuya infinite runs. The non-evo version is decent too, but let's be real. If you're using to do, it's for his unique movement ability, not his raw power. Let's switch gears a bit and talk about a unit who might not seem like a superstar at first, but can be an absolute lifesaver in the right scenario, Blossom. Her ability to cleanse debuffs is often overlooked, but if you've ever struggled with the DD Legend stages or faced the relentless stuns in the Rengoku raid, you know how invaluable a cleanse can be. Sure, that 100 second cooldown feels like an eternity, but sometimes that single moment of freedom is all you need to turn the tide. And for early game support, you can't overlook Inamuki. This unit might not be as flashy as others, but his ability to pull enemies towards him is incredibly clutch in the beginning stages of the game. He's kind of like Agony's younger sibling, solid, dependable, and just plain useful when you're starting out. If you're not ready to pour massive resources into high-end units, Inamuki has got your back without draining your resources. Lastly, Alligator is the unsung hero of the support category. Don't let his epic rank fool you. He can apply a nearly permanent 50% slow debuff to enemies, and that's a game changer, especially in boss fights. No need for heavy investment like with Agony, making him a fantastic budget pick. And while Agony's AoE knockback is great, you better be prepared to put in the work to make him shine. It's all about finding what fits your playstyle. But for my money, Alligator is a sleeper hit that doesn't require tons of grinding. There you have it. A breakdown of the top support and farm units in anime vanguards. Each of these characters has their strengths and weaknesses, and it all boils down to how you like to play. Do you want to outlast your opponents in drawn out battles or go for quick wins? Whatever your strategy, there's a unit here that's perfect for you. Choose wisely, invest smartly, and watch your squad dominate. The video ends here, see you in another video, don't forget to subscribe.